Thank you so much for that warm welcome and thank you for the opportunity to present today. So in this workshop, students and staff from Maynooth University and Maynooth Students' Union are going to discuss a student-staff partnership that we've built in support of enhancing digital teaching and learning at Maynooth. So before we begin, I'll briefly introduce some of the key members of our partnership and you'll meet, be meeting some of them during the workshop today. So my name is Morag Monroe. I work in Maynooth University as the Maynooth Project Lead for the Enhancing Digital Teaching and Learning, or EDTL project. And this is a cross-institutional initiative across Ireland's seven universities, and it's led by the Irish Universities Association. And this project aims to improve the digital experiences and digital attributes of Irish university students and it's in this context that we've developed the partnership that we'll discuss today. So moving on to the members of our partnership, uh, Julian Nagy is our outgoing Maynooth Students' Union Vice President, Education. Eddie Carr is the Student Success Project Executive with Maynooth University. And Kathleen Kurtz, Robin Mailer, Michaela Waters and Chris Abraham are all Maynooth University students who are employed as part-time student interns as part of the EDTL project. And we're also part of a wider group made up of past and present members of staff and students across Maynooth University and also Maynooth Students Union. And you can see their names on the right hand side of the screen. So in our workshop today, Eddie is first going to provide some context for our discussion about student staff partnerships. He's then going to hand over to Cathy, who's going to talk more about the group and the ways in which we've aimed to make this an authentic partnership between students and staff. Cathy and I are going to speak about the, some, some of the benefits we've seen from the partnership, both from a student perspective and also from a staff perspective. Robin is then going to talk about some of the resources and supports that the students have developed and then finally, Chris is going to talk about what we've learned and some of our future plans. So at various points during the workshop, we're going to ask you to participate in some chat bombs. So I'm going to hand over to you, uh, Cathy now, and she's just going to explain how that will work and introduce our first chat bomb. Perfect. Thanks so much, Morag. And hi, everyone. It's great to, to talk to you today. So, um, yeah, what we've kind of um, incorporated in our workshop to keep it interactive are various chat bombs. And whenever you see kind of this slide or a slide that looks similar to this one, we'll um, ask you to uh, for your kind of engagement or your opinion and how that works is um, first of all, we're gonna, I'm gonna, or whoever facilitates the chat bomb will read out the question. So for this one, it is how energized and awake are you feeling in this moment? So from one to 10, one would be super sleepy and 10 would be the most possible, you know, super excited and ready and energized, uh, maybe after 10 coffees or so. And what we'll do is like, after we read out the question, we'll give you about 30 seconds to type your answer in the chat without clicking send yet. So we're gonna let you know when you have about, you know, 15, min 15 seconds left. Um, and then also when it comes closer to the 30 second mark, and then we'll ask you to click send all together at the same time. And we'll have um, a lot of responses in the chat and whoever facilitates the, the chat pump will read out the, um, some of the contributions. So to practice that, and it's really very simple, um, yeah, we have this first chat bump, which is how energized and awake are you feeling this moment, one to 10? So I'll ask you to type your answer in the chat. Probably I'll give you a little bit less than 30 seconds because that's just literally a number and that you have to type, but you can think about it a little bit. And I'll give you five more seconds. And now click send if you have decided on a number. And we see the numbers coming in. Perfect. Martina is six. Great. Morak eight. Eddie is seven. Chris eight. Richard is 10. Excited and currently on a run. Listen again. Wow. That's the privilege that you join us. Very welcome, Richard. <laughs> That's great. Okay, cool. So I think the concept is pretty easy. And if there are any questions, feel free to jump in at any point. And I'll pass you on to, I think Eddie is next. Yeah. Thank you very much, Cathy. Um, so 
I think lots of energized people in the room there looking at the scores. We're looking at six, sevens and eights. So that's good. Um, my name is Eddie uh, and uh, I'm the Student Success Project Executive here in Maynooth University. Um, and I'm going to take you through a really quick overview um, of student partnership and how it can be developed. Um, so for many, um, a student attending university, it's a transformative and an empowering process. Um, students are adapting to new surroundings. They're encouraged to think critically. Um, and they're exposed to views outside their previous experience. And as outlined in the HEA reports and through the work of the National Student Engagement Programme here in Ireland, um, a key part of this development and personal development is students being treated as authentic partners. And this is perhaps best demonstrated, um, it's on screen at the moment, in Bovel and Bully's adoption of Arniston's Ladder of Citizen Participation, depicted here, you might have seen it before. And as student participation moves up the ladder, it changes from the student's involvement level from being maybe excluded, um, true to tokenistic, true to partnered. And I'm sure we'd all agree um, that we would value students, authentic student involvement and partnership. Um, but how do you begin to climb that ladder um, of involvement? And we believe it can start um, with projects um, such as our own that we'll speak about today, the EDTL project, and it can grow from there. Um, however, nothing worth having comes easy. Um, so what are some tips maybe for growing the practice of involving students as authentic partners? Well, first up um, would be to identify your allies, colleagues, senior management, other students maybe um, who share this vision of partnership and are willing to get involved with or to champion um, your working group or your project. That can be really important. Um, secondly, get the students union on board. There's no greater champion. Um, of the authentic student experience than students themselves. And students' unions can really open that door for you um, through the representative structures. Um, clear governance is really important as well, right from the very start. Um, make it clear why people are involved, how decisions are going to be reached, um, and what the goals of your working group or your project are. And we'll hear more about that later. And then maybe finally spread the word, um, and we're doing it today. In our experience, the benefits of student partnership on projects such as this, they're real um, and they're energizing for all involved. So spread the good word um, and encourage other working groups to adopt a partnership approach. And that's a little bit about student partnership and soon we'll hear more specifics about our own project. Um, but first, a chat bomb. Um, so as Cathy already outlined, um, I'll give you about 30 seconds to think about this question. Um, what are the challenges in implementing authentic student partnership. So if you're to think about a project maybe or um, something you're involved in um, that, that wants to make use of student partnership, what are the challenges that are going to be there? So we have maybe 30 seconds to think about that. Um, you could think of one challenge, many challenges. Um, and we'll have a look at them now in just a few seconds. So we're about halfway through your thinking time on that one. Um, what challenges would there be in implementing student partnership. And about five more seconds. And if you're ready with an answer anytime now um, into the chat box, um, I see them coming in. Um, I can see, yeah, negativity maybe on, on people's behalf or students being nervous about getting involved. I think that that's an interesting one. Um, and it leads to opportunity as well. Do students know how to get involved? Um, the need to convince staff of the importance of student partnership, absolutely. Um, academic confidence, a similar theme there, um, including, including students throughout the learning journey. Um, assessment, yes, um, absolutely. Diverse range of student voices, that's really important. And again, plays to the opportunity. How can we open up opportunity to more people and make sure that we're speaking to a diverse range of people? Um, coming up against pre-existing structures within the institution is a very interesting one. Um, challenges with leadership, lack of a good model, absolutely. Um, and ensuring a diversity, once again, um, of voices. And they are all challenges that um, you know, are encountered in projects such as this, and we'll touch on some of these. So it's great to see them come up. Um, so Cathy now um, is going to speak um, more about authentic partnership and how it can be fostered across the institution. Cathy. Perfect, thanks, Eddie. So something that must be recognized is the cross-institutional nature of Maynooth EDTL and especially how existing MSU representational structures have been utilized to populate the elected members of the project team. The project team incorporates full staff members from Maynooth and MSU, that's the Maynooth Students' Union, and the staff provide advice, operational support, and continuity. 
MSU elected representatives on the committee include MSU officers and one academic rep per faculty. Maynooth EDTL also has four student interns, one of which is like Michaela is not here today, but three of us you will meet today. And we take on a significant operational role. So the group also receives external support from the IUA, the Irish University Association and their partners. The student members of the team come from a diverse range of backgrounds. So this direct link to the student body that allows a range of student experiences and needs to be taken into consideration by the project team is really important and crucial to our, to our group. And our working group has its goal to gather a device and um, diverse choir of student and staff perspectives. So we need to reach this, uh, this diversity that's um, come up in the chat. And to give you a better sense then our team includes postgraduate and un undergraduate students, um, student members from all three faculties. And that means that, st that the group has this direct link um, through these um, direct student members um, that allows this range of student experiences and needs to be taken in consideration by the, by the whole project team. And then also part of the team are the MSU elected representatives on the com committee and again, these academic reps per faculty team. And of course, as EDTL interns, Chris, Robin, Michaela and I, and we take on a very crucial um, operational role in this whole process. And there are clear benefits um, to coordinating student partnership through a student's union. That's why we bring in the um, Maynooth Students Union. The Students Union are democratically run organizations so uh, a project like EDTL can source democratically elected student representatives. Students unions tend to have positions dedicated to specific cohorts of students, making inclusion of those courts easier. So for example, um, MSU groups our um, academic reps by faculties for meetings, making sourcing of members from these courts a straightforward task. So students unions typically tend to have a number of levels of elected representatives ranging from the executive to academic or class reps, giving again a number of distinct cohorts with different levels of engagement. Students unions have developed communication channels also to communicate with the student body. So if a, a student union is a partner in the project, it is naturally more willing to lend those channels to the project team and to kind of exchange channels of communication. So the EDTL team now collaborates closely with the Students' Union. This work takes the form of Facebook Live events, webinars, and conference presentations. Also, the Students' Union has let us take over their Instagram account, which is a very important channel of communication for the Students' Union, um, already a few times so we can interact with more students, so those who follow the SU account directly, and not only our EDTL Instagram account, which we'll present to you a little bit later too. We base these students' takeovers around different topics, such as organizing your desktop, exam and assignment advice, or digital detoxing, just to name a few. We also established our Minuth internal working group, with one of its priorities being academic integrity in all its facets. So as you heard, the working group incorporates these full-time staff members from Minuth and MSU. And the staff um, provide also a very important role um, you know, again, in, in terms of like leading operational support and continuity. But what we aim to do is challenge traditional ways of thinking and hierarchical power structures within the institution. And this ethos is really crucial to every action that we take. So for example, recently we started rotating the role of the chair in our working group meetings. Getting students involved early on in the project can mix pre-established institutional structures up and also brings new perspectives into the table. To ensure a variety of viewpoints in our team, positions are renewed every year when elected student reps change over. Using this approach, we can open up opportunities to more students rather than focusing on the usual participants. And this is especially important because we all know there is no such thing as a student voice, but the student voice consists of diverse student voices that deserve equal care. So bringing in student reps that represent different subsets of the student body helps with diversity and inclusivity. For example, we noticed that we have a high representation of students from an arts and humanities and business background. And recently we opened up a new vacancy for a student from science and engineering studies. This is how Chris became part of the project team. And in some, students are valued, encouraged and entrusted with creative control. 
the key here is everything that you'll see and all the resources that we create have come into existence through prioritizing student leadership. Now we have another chat bomb. And the question here is, what's the difference between partnership and engagement? Just a little brainstorm. There is no right or wrong, uh, right or wrong answer. So you'll have 30 seconds starting from now, and then I'll say stop and let you know, of course, halfway through. What's the difference between partnership and engagement? Is there even a difference? I'd say this could be 15 seconds now. And five more seconds. And 30 seconds, seconds. Now we can click send if you're ready. Great, great, great. Um, telling versus consulting. Interesting. Partnership. Everyone has an equal seat at the table. All can take leadership roles. Yeah, exactly. That's what we're also trying to achieve with for example, like rotating the, the role of the chair um, to kind of have more a partnership approach. Very interesting. Partnership goes beyond engagement to collaborate on finding common solutions to areas of shared concern. So it even goes beyond engagement. Mm -hmm. You can say you will get involved, but will you actually contribute? Contribution in some form is the engagement. Oh, that's really interesting. Very nice unpacking of these terms here. Um, Richard says partnership is shared authority and responsibility and representation. Yeah, shared responsibility. That's that's really interesting. Perhaps also shared accountability then comes in with it. Very interesting. Thank you. These are great answers. So now I want um, to talk a little bit about the, the benefits that we saw. Um, and for that before we do so though, there's another chat bomb to kind of get everyone on the same page here to start thinking about the benefits. What are the benefits of authentic student par partnership? If you can think of some, what could be benefits of authentic student partnership? And I give you 30 seconds from now. And I'd say now it's 50 sec 15 seconds left. What are the benefits of authentic student partnership? And five seconds left. And if you're ready, we can click send now. Wonderful, wonderful, great contributions here. Judith says, reduction of the awarding gap, better assessment literacy for both staff and students. Yeah, assessment is a big one um, that can be altered or even improved with, with partnership, a partnership approach. Very good. Um, authentically student-centered projects in their design, mm -hmm. design of projects, better resources and experience for students. Mm -hmm. The student voice is foregrounded and decisions are made with rather with rather than for students. Yeah, this shared decision making, hearing and valuing the student perspective. Yeah, that's very, very important, I think, to have an authentic partnership. Um, staff and students can learn from each other mm -hmm, and also work together to solve a common problem. Again, this collaborative approach. Very good. Um, great. OK, now. I want to revisit the example where I had the opportunity to try out the role of chairing a meeting. So being a chair means being responsible for getting through the meeting agenda and making sure everyone is heard and gets the chance to speak and also making space to share my own thoughts. And this requires me to be sensitive for the whole atmosphere in the meeting and being respectful also of those who speak and those who want to speak. Having the opportunity to practice such leadership and communication skills in a safe environment prepares me for the future. I think next slide, Morak. Wonderful, thank you. 
Um, another example is Robin will show you later uh, one of the products of our um, of our partnership and um, together with the critical skills department at Minuth. So what we did with them is we created a website and um, actually different websites filled with resources, tips and tutorials around creating multimedia content. The audience of these websites are our fellow students. It has um, been great kind of to create something purposeful and come up with supports that we wished we had had available ourselves as students earlier on. And then also seeing this website actually go live is another very rewarding experience. Moreover, we learned to use how to use WordPress in various ways, which are skills that are widely applicable to any kind of website beyond this particular context, whatever we end up doing later on. And what was probably the biggest benefit for me um, in my involvement with the EDTL team um, comes from various chances that I had to design together uh, with Robin and Michaela these various conference presentations, such as this one. And also Instagram takeovers work together on this, uh, writing a script and also various webinars. And even right now, for example, I'm gathering extremely valuable experience in public speak speaking to you. Participating in conferences is a reality for any job in academia, which I hope to pursue. And I had the chance to try out how it feels to share my thoughts with others in context, context such as this right now. And I came to directly experience through that, that I actually have something meaningful to say and that people want to listen to me as a student. Great, um, next slide, please. And now I pass you on to Morag, who will share the um, staff point of view. Brilliant, thank you, Kathy. So I've been working in various roles aimed at supporting academic staff in their learning and teaching practice for many, many years now. And although the ultimate aim of this work is to improve student learning, until partaking in this partnership, I actually had very little direct contact with undergraduate students. So on a personal level, this partnership has been transformative in allowing me to begin to better understand the perspectives of students. And this in turn has allowed me to feed that into the work that I do with teaching staff. As part of our partnership, we've been able to have staff and students engage in dialogue around topics that they might have not had the opportunity to discuss previously. And this has really provided staff with valuable insights into students' experiences and also their perspectives. Another important aspect of our work is that we've been able to work together to come up with collaborative solutions to shared concerns. So an example of this that is that recently our group collaborated to begin developing a lecture recording policy for Maynooth University. And by engaging in dialogue around the many issues relating to lecture recording, allowed staff to better understand the perspectives of students and also vice versa. And also by working in partnership, we were able to incorporate these perspectives into the policy. So I'm going to hand you over now to Robin and Robin is going to talk you through some of the resources and supports that the intern, interns have developed as part of the project. Brilliant, thanks so much Morag. Um, so we'll just begin with a quick chat bomb. Um, so before we speak about our, our engagement methods through social media, um, we just want to ask how else can you reach out students to both involve and engage them? Um, so whether it be any ideas you have or anything you've seen happen in your university. Um, so I'll just give you a few seconds to type out your answer there. Brilliant. So maybe whenever everyone's ready, you might send your answer into the chat and we can see some examples. So Judith says, um, using other students, uh, personal appeal in classes. Um, Eddie says, focus groups, presentations to student representational forums. Kathy says, through the library, when possible, ask them in person on campus. Yeah, that's something I suppose we all wish that we could use um, personal engagement. Um, yeah, so Marg, if you want to move the slides along, this is just an example um, of our um, EDTL Instagram page. So this, uh, we work with the other um, interns in the seven universities, and this is a page that we've created. Um, and it's kind of nearly a hub for 
all, all our resources across all the universities. And um, we've really been focusing on helping students um, enhance their experience as they transition online. Um, in the next slide, we have an example um, of some of the infographics we have created. Um, you know, we felt that academic integrity in an online setting is very important to inform students about. So we focused on contract cheating um, and things like essay modes and making students aware of that. Um, we also really wanted to encourage engagement and help students feel comfortable um, engaging their classes online. Um, so we had we wanted to encourage them to turn your mic on, turn your camera on. Um, you know, we we got a lot of feedback from lecturers and staff. They were having this problem. Um, you know, they were looking for ways that they could help students feel comfortable to engage in an online setting. Um, in the next slide, um, we have um, we focus a lot on minding your mental health and um, the. Irish University Association launched a campaign to defeat the cheat um, and to prevent contract cheating in an online setting. Um, and then we also did a motivational March challenge where we got um, members of um, the project team for ETL to pick kind of a tip that they can they do to make themselves feel motivated, especially at that time when lockdown was being extended. And we created some short videos um, and some tips such as, you know, make, maybe waking up an hour earlier or making a to-do list and things like that. Um, we also, uh, the IUA ran a series of webinars um, with different topics each week and uh, we focused on inclusivity and um, the kind of the benefits of online learning and how um, the accessibility uh, is a factor um, uh, for students with different needs. And we also made some um, graphics for assessments in an online setting and MCQs and working on online group projects. Um, so some of the issues that we identified in Maynooth um, in the online learning environment was that students, especially in the business department, were experiencing difficulty finding relevant news sources um, and including them in their assignments. So we promoted, promoted NewsGuard, which is an internet trust tool that comes in the form of a browser extension. Um, and it rates websites and publications based on nine criteria of transparency and credibility, um, almost like a nutrition label for um, certain online websites and students were also finding it challenging to evaluate online sources and to establish the trustworthiness of internet sites. So we promoted the radar technique which encourages students to switch on their radar and navigate the sea of information that is the internet um, and it helps students to evaluate sources based on relevance, authority, date, appearance and the reason for writing. And then, as I mentioned earlier, we identified academic integrity as a key issue facing students in the online learning environment. And we felt that students, that it was important that students were educated on the topic, um, especially with issues such as plagiarism and contract cheating, and we discussed them. So then um, we thought about how we might communicate our message to our audience. So um, we launched some takeover days with the Manu Students Union Instagram page. Um, and these takeover days gave us interns an, an opportunity to speak directly to students. Um, we created some short informative videos explaining some of the resources that we had made. And more importantly, we put up question boxes and polls um, to answer any queries that students had. Um, and we encouraged them to directly message us to gather feedback and then to identify any difficulties that students were experiencing um, so we could address them for the future. And um, we also use it as a way to check in with students and um, ask how they were and help them feel listened, listened to and that there was, um, you know, students like uh, us that we could advocate on their behalf and um, if they had any difficulty in the online learning environment. Um, then we also had uh, the opportunity to speak on the teaching module TL517. Um, so it's a digital learning module that MORAG teaches and uh, we came on as guest speakers to share the student experience with online learning. Um, you know, we felt it was very important to communicate the needs of students in a digital learning environment um, and highlight any issues that staff may not be aware of. Um, and also it was you know, it was about creating a safe place where students and staff could have open discussions about the challenges and the opportunities that online learning presents to them both. So I'll hand you over. Oh, we have a, another chat bomb here. Um, so we want to ask, 
what types of student partnerships are playing out across your institution. So I'll give you a few seconds there to um, come up with an answer. So this might necessarily have to be social media, but um, any way that you feel that students and staff are partnering together in your institution. So whenever you're ready there, you can um, submit your answer into the chat. So Eddie says, student union structures, reps on committees and various projects. And Kathy says, assessment in some modules and um, content. Yeah, so it's really important um, to ask students nearly what assessment they prefer um, and what sort of things they'd like to study. And you said, it is very hit and miss. We are looking at students as partners in assessment project. Yeah, I think a lot of the webinars that um, we've had over the last year as assessment moved online, you know, people, the lecturers are finding it that it's so important to ask students about what, what methods they prefer, uh, which is great. Um, so I think Chris now is going to speak about some lessons and future plans that we have for our group. Thanks, Robin. So I'm Chris and I'll be talking about the lessons that we have learned, but also about our future plans. So one of the major things we realized was that there was a diversity of student voices ranging across the different faculties, but also across different backgrounds. It is important that all these voices are heard. One of our main focus areas during recent times was on academic integrity. We wish to continue researching this topic while also looking at how possible um, staff student partnership can be of benefit to as authentic assessments. It is clear that strong student engagement and collaborations is required for a successful, successful partnership. Therefore, it is important to create a space where both staff and students can engage in meaningful dialogue. That moves on to a very important question, which is what is for the future? I believe that through strong engagement and through sharing experiences and meaningful dialogue, both teaching for staff and learning for students can become more effective. Now I would like to go on to the last chat bomb of this presentation. And the question is, what did we speak about today that you could use to build partnership with your students? So as usual, 30 seconds and at the end, let's it sign together. I'll say that's about 15 seconds gone. And now whenever everyone's ready, you can hit stand. So Eddie's saying bringing in the SU to provide diversity of student voice. Yeah, the SU is such a large community that there's a representative from everywhere, so it's a really good option. More focus on assess assessment design, looking at misses, but a bit but more and using them as learning opportunity instead of getting too excited about the hits. And which is a lot of food for thought. I have loads of ideas, thanks. At five kilometers, so hardly able to breathe. Thank you for joining us on your own. All right, with that being said, um, I would like to thank everyone for listening to us. And at this time, we will be answering any questions that you may have. Thank you.